requiring a lot to get a school counseling certificate. And so it, it's, and we've had that problem in counseling as a whole, where we have some programs that have really strict standards and we keep increasing the quality of their graduates, and we have others that simply don't attend to that, and that, that hurts. And so accreditation hurts a profession. Accreditation was being talked about. One of the leaders in accreditation was an Ohio person. Tom Sweeney from Ohio University got interested in accreditation early on in his career and pushed hard for it. Community health, count, mental health counseling was becoming a specialty now that was beginning to be recognized as something new and something that had some potential to it. A national movement toward licensure of mental health counselors began. Virginia was the first state to pass a licensure law um, in, I believe it was 76. Uh, school counseling expanded, but in Ohio, it began to, to suffer one of its first major obstacles in that vocational monies that were vocational guidance amendments, vocational education amendments that talked about career counseling, that money in Ohio was siphoned off by the Ohio Department of Ed and sent to the Division of Vocational Education, which is a part, was a part of the Ohio Department of Ed. And that money went to recruit for students to come into the vocational schools. So career counseling dollars were spent for other reasons in Ohio than for the improvement of school counseling, where in some states, like Wisconsin, that money went in to continually improve the quality of the school counselors that were operating within that state. And it, 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 that lasted for better than 20 years. The monies that could have gone and should have gone, our Ohio Department of Ed simply made decisions. The counseling associations were not strong enough to do anything about it. And it's, and it's too bad. I think it's really, I believe it really hurt uh, school counseling. Thoughts or comments that anybody has? No questions? In the 80s, the student counselor ratio of 401 was eliminated. I mean, gee, those counselors must just be wasting their time. You can't do more than that. Yeah, so it was gone. It's like that. It's gone. Now, that should have been a signal that people were getting a little discouraged. Mm -hmm. What was it that those school counselors were really doing there? What, what difference were they making? But it was gone. Oh, he said, now, keep in mind, too, and this is very important uh, for those of you that um, maybe want at some point to be a school counselor, um, and we'll briefly touch upon that later, but uh, you had, in order to be a school counselor in a lot of states in the 70s and 80s, you had to have a background in teaching. Mm -hmm. You had to be a teacher. And so a lot of people that went into school counseling were people that came from the education ranks. They weren't people that uh, were simply there. You know, that, oh, gee, I want to be a counselor. Let me go and get a degree. They were people that came through the ranks of teaching and saw that as kind of what they would do. I mean, if you get tired of being in the classroom, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Hey, let me get out so I have an office and a desk and I can drink coffee when I want to, you know. So there's lots of reasons for people to do what they do. And they all aren't all altru altruistic. They all aren't for the best reasons. And sometimes people got into school counseling for reasons that weren't always the best. And some people got in because they were totally devoted to students. That happens in my, most professions. Um, OASIS. Now, you keep in mind, I'm talking about the Ohio Association of Counselor Education and Supervision. The counselor educators led a task force to try and increase the education required because we still had places giving out two or having people take two or three courses. Come in this summer, take two or three courses, and you can go be a school counselor. Mm -hmm. So when you've got that kind of training going on, that's not going to lead to the very best and the brightest in the place you want them to be. So, um, but Oasis was always, in fact, it has a, a reputation of being the group in Ohio that keeps pushing, has kept pushing for more and more education for um, the training that is needed to be a school 
a school counselor. Um, and same thing now with, with clinical. Um, and, and when I say, you have to understand, whenever any standards are changed in the state of Ohio related to education, there's a commission put together that, that makes recommendations and then deals with those changes. Those, that commission is all educators. So there's no diverse voices coming into the conversation. So the same thing happened again and again and again. And so, hey, we don't need one year of teaching experience. Let's require three. No evidence, no research, nothing to suggest that one year makes a difference, let alone three, okay? So you see how it begins to narrow and narrow and narrow the pool of people who would think about themselves as, as becoming a school counselor. We used to have people come, even into the 90s, um, to, into our program, or they'd come to talk about coming into our program in Ohio State, and they would say, I'd like to be a school counselor. And, and I would always say, now you recognize that you cannot be a school counselor in Ohio without teaching experience. Now we'll be happy to train you here, but you are probably going to have to go to another state in order to actually practice school counseling. And, oh, you mean I have to be a teacher? I said, yeah, I have to be a teacher. And then it wasn't bad enough that I said you had to be a teacher one year. I had to say you had to be a teacher three years. <laughs> and so at that point, their interest in if they were going to, if they were going to stay in Ohio, their interest kind of evaporated. Because who wants to become one profession? or one kind of professional in order to become another kind of professional. Doesn't make any sense, does it? But it makes sense if somebody, if a small group of people are controlling your profession, and that's what was happening. Educators, other educators were controlling the profession. So um, federal counseling money began to disappear mm -hmm. in, during this time, too. Uh, and it's been a very, very slim to not accepting the vote yet. That's why the vote yet, the vote yet amendments and the vote yet money was so important because that's where money and career counseling was getting some of its stature, but not if not through an uh, NDEA or ESEA. Anymore. Um, in 1987, we had a we had a national conference on elementary school counseling, elementary middle school counseling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in Columbus, Ohio, and Plaster was the keynote speaker. This is one of the few national conventions. We had an ACES here, didn't we, Lee, a couple of years ago? We had an ACES here, um, two years ago, I think. But we haven't had too many national, con national conferences here in Ohio, but this is one that we did, we did have. And uh, uh, so that happened. In, in 88, the, there was a great consternation across the state about what was happening to school counseling. And so um, Ohio State University took the lead in developing a uh, coalition. And they brought together 27 counselor educators from across Ohio and worked very hard at trying to figure out ways to revitalize school counseling. Developed some materials that had student competencies in them and encouraged counselors to write written guidance programs for them to or not, whether they, you know whether the state wanted them or not, but to, to get some sort of curricular uh, approach to school counseling, uh, put out some. Don't have it handy just now to show you, but put out a brochure uh, to try to like Ohio's students need school counselors, doing everything they could to kind of revitalize school counseling. I'm just wondering how that worked. It seemed like 22 or 27. Represent 27 counselor educators, uh, the trainers, trying to get the trainers to do something as a unit. One of the things that's, that, and that's a really good question, I'm glad you asked it. One, one of the things over the years in Ohio has been that when you wanted to get something done that needed some time to do it, that the, the professional that has more time to work on an issue is usually a counselor educator. 
Because if you're a mental health counselor, you can't get out of your job day by day. If you're a private practice, you can't really afford to spend too many days away from clients. If you're a school counselor, you can't get out of the school. The, the, the professional within our ranks, or the part of the profession within our ranks, that has more, I don't want to call it free time, but they have more time that they can divert, it's the counselor educator. And so lots of the, the movements have kind of begun or been, been started or carried through by the counselor educators because that's kind of the spot that, the, that they've been in. So to ensure, this is a little tangent, but to ensure representation on a project like that, um, so that it's not just an academic focus, Yes. How, how can we ensure that, that it trickles down to not just yes. those that are being trained, yes. but those that are already trained? Yes. We had counselors, we had school counselors, we collaborated with, with the Ohio School Counseling Association. One of the things we were trying to do was get the Ohio School Counselor Association off its stuff. We felt that they were doing nothing, that they weren't, they'd become kind of a social pleasant group, but nobody was kicking ass. Nobody was doing a thing. And so that's what we were trying to do. We were trying to get people to say, you know what? This isn't acceptable anymore. What are we thrown into? Some kind of fat, lazy, middle-aged people. Let's do something here about our, you know, about our profession. What's happening? So that's, uh, and, and we did. I mean, you know, you do something like this, and you get a brochure out, and you hold a conference, and, uh, which is what we did. I mean, the school counselors kind of woke up. It was like, well, what are they doing? What are they doing? And how can we be a part of that? And what should we do? And it resulted in, the consequence of that was that the school counselors did try to get legislation passed that was called 80-20 legislation. 80% of their time would be spent in direct services to kids and 20% would be in services other than direct services to kids. Because if any of you know anything about school counseling, what you know is what's happened to school counselors is they're doing all kinds of paper and administrative work because their boss is the, the principal. And that's who is telling them what to do. Many principals do not have the remotest idea of how to use their school counselors or their school psychologists. They, they, in, until 1987, principals in Ohio had to take one course in how do you use pupil personnel specialists in their, in their um, schools. In 1987, that course was eliminated. Mm -hmm. So since 1987, no principals in the state of Ohio have been trained in any way about how to use their pupil personnel specialists in the school. And so many of them use them as assistant principals or semi, you know, do anything that they don't want to have done or that they don't want to do. And so it takes a very strong school counselor to stand up and fight back in those kinds of situations. They are evaluated by their principal. Many of them would tell you they're evaluated on teacher forms. Do a bullet board well, maintain control of the class. They aren't even evaluated on any job description. Oh, they don't have job descriptions. It's at the whim of the principal. So that's how, you, that's how a profession gets themselves in a really bad, or a part of a profession gets themselves in a really bad situation. So thanks for asking that question. Um, at any rate, I need to move a little faster here, don't I? Um, this is some of what the coalition did. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because I, I think.